Welcome to Shorty Supercoach and welcome to the weekend preview and kind of my press conference. There's footy going absolutely every day and I don't know, I'm not a massive fan of it. It's good to have it as an option, I guess, but I sort of feel like it devalues the games and I haven't even watched them all because sometimes you just got other stuff to do or you, you're a bit footied out. I mean, I love footy as much as anyone, but uh, I am looking forward to some normality, but that's more of a Shorty Say segment. So... Just quickly, I didn't go that good last week. I think I scored a touch under 1,900, and I dropped back to somewhere in the 8,000s. So that's another drop in my ranks, and it's fair to say I need to bounce back. I was hurt by Draper being rested because, you know, that really hurt my ruck. And even though it was just the top 18 scorers, it, it sort of has a flow-on effect. Even though you've still got 18 scorers or whatever, you get an extra poor score into your total. So... It did hurt me, but we'll just see what we can do. I brought Zach Williams in the other day, and, and I presume he scored all right. I haven't looked at the scores, but he, he looked like he played fairly well. But Max Gorn, Maxi, what are you doing to us, mate? You're killing us. You've been so good for all the season, and you've really just kicked us in the ass right now. It's going to be real tricky for us to make some decisions because he's not playing again this week. That's been confirmed. The line is that they're really confident he'll be right to go for the next game. Can we take that? <laughs> Jeez, can we accept it or take it with a grain of salt? So what are your options? Before I go into Gorn and the options, I've got 10 trades at the moment, and at the end of the week I'll have eight. Just to give you some perspective on, you know, might be wondering how many trades should I have left, but... Not so much about the trade number, but how many more premiums you've got to get in your side. So I think it's time for Pickett to go, and I'm going to bring in Nat Fife. I mean, there's a few other guys you could go for, but I'm really keen on Fife, and there's a few other blokes, other premiums, but he's the one I've been looking at for a while now. Um, I know Vandermeer's out, um, Brad Close is out, and obviously Gorn I mentioned. I'm really confident Draper will come back. But point being, we've already got a little bit of carnage to work with. And look, let's just hope that we get a little bit of love over the teams because they're just getting drip-fed to us. So it's a bit hard to get an absolute idea of what we're going to do. But you're sitting there and you're thinking, Shorty, just shut up, mate. You're rambling. Tell me what to do with Gorn. you got three options. I'm going to work you through those. Option number one, you just hold him. You don't care. You're going for your league win and you just sort of feel like you know okay I won't have the best week but I still think I can get the win in my league okay fair enough but the bigger picture you could leave him you could cop the zero if you're really really struggling on the trade front option number two is does Draper come back and a lot of people will have him in their third position on the rock department and you just wait and see Wait and see what happens. If Draper comes in, all well and good. You get a probably a bit worse off a score because Draper could score anything. 50, 60, 90, 25. Could be anything. But let's focus on the doomsday. What if it all goes to shit? What if Gorn's not there, which we know, and Draper's not there, and you're faced with a zero? No one wants to cop a zero. What do you do? Your options are either to trade your ruck three, and that could be to Tom DeConning if he is going to get a game. I think uh, he he looked okay last week. There was a bit of hype about him, but he didn't score well, and he dropped a stack of marks, and he, he looked very raw. But he is a talented player with a lot of promise. But you might just say, look, I, if Gorn's going to be back, I don't want to get rid of him. I just need someone to score. I, let's just hope he can get me 60 points. And, you know, you, you earn 40K or something like that you, if you're going down from Draper or or if you've got a 102K rookie, you know, I probably wouldn't endorse it because I'm not sure on DeConning's job security. But so that's your option there. Option in terms of Gorn and whether you move him, you can trade Gorn out for a couple of blokes. You might just say, look, all right, he might be back, he might not, but Todd Goldstein, I'll just bring him in. Todd's going great. He's averaging 120. Okay, it's, it's not Gorn's unbelievable 180s, but Goldie is capable of unbelievable numbers. I want a guy who can score 100. I'm bringing him in. I don't want that 
headache of whether Gorn's going to come back and how fit he's going to be. Goldstein's going to right boom. And you get 150k. Because, and that's nearly as good as a downgrade at the moment from a rookie. You know, most cash cows are struggling to get beyond 280 at the minute. So, you know, it's as good as a downgrade to get some cash to upgrade elsewhere. But you might also say, oh, you know, Goldstein, could he get rested? You know, he's a bit older now. I mean, North, they've got nothing to play for. And, you know, it's a, it's a fit and firing season. You know, you might need a resting here and there. Or you might even think, oh, I'm probably losing 20 points a week the way things have been going because Gorn's been going unbelievable. And Goldie's been going great, but in comparison to Gorn, I'm, I'm losing points. So let's get creative. There's your options, you know, trade in to get an R3 that's not going to score too well, but you just need something. Wait for Draper or trade Gorn to a premium that takes your fancy, most likely Goldstein. Or you get creative. And it really just depends on what sort of trades you have up your sleeve to use. If you're a little bit light on, you might not go down this path. But the creative option is, and here's some numbers for you. Gorn is 720k at the moment. Peter Laddams is about 417 or something like that. Gorn has a break even of 241 because he scored like 90 odd and 107. Laddams has gone massive. He's got a break even about a negative nine. So there's the numbers for you. And this is this is fancy sort of stuff. This is it's a little wishy washy. I'd only endorse it if you feel as if you have trades to not so much burn, but you can play with them. You know, they're not like gold to you at the moment. So what do you do? You go Gorn to Laddams. Now Laddams has been in firing form. How long could he keep that up? I'm not too sure. There's other Ruckman sort of coming into Port Adelaide's side. I'm not sure how it's going to affect him. He's a bloke who's talented and he's running hot. Now, he's not going to run hot for the rest of the season. He's going to dip at some point. But what we've got is two 120-plus scores locked and loaded, gives him a really low break even, and we know his price is going north. We know that. So, in theory, you go Gorn down to Laddams. There's 300k in your bank, nicely in the pocket. Beautiful. But... You obviously still want Gorn. This is a bit like, if we're talking stock markets, get in and get out. You know, get in low, and when we cop that high rise, get the hell out. Now, I'm thinking, Laddams, we know he's going up this week. He's coming up against the Cats. We don't even have a great ruck department, really. So it's not as though he's coming up against an amazing team or ruckman that's going to belt him up. So he's every chance to continue scoring well. But regardless, he could score 72 he's still going up a massive amount of coin. And if Gorn does come back, let's glance forward a week. Gorn does come back, and you just you just trade him back in. And what you've done is you've pocketed whatever Laddams goes up in price. Now, that's probably going to be anywhere from 30 to 50K, all depending what he scores. But where you could really start to make some coin is if you were to play... The slightly longer game, it's still short term, but a two two or three week sort of look at it. You see how Laddams goes, you ride the wave of his big scores that he's already done, and you hold him for two weeks. And he goes bang, bang. He's up to like 500k. And Gorn has come back. He comes back next week, but you resist him. You go, no. Nah, Laddams went okay, he's still got another price rise in him, and I know Gorn's going to drop a hell of a lot. Coming back from injury, do they manage his minutes? Probably won't be at his absolute best. Let's say he scores 140, which is pretty impressive on return. That's still 100 less than his break even. Gorn, when he returns, will definitely go beyond 700k. He's going to lose minimum 20k. If I was guessing, he'll be like 680 for sure, at some point in the near future. He could probably drop a hell of a lot less, but in one week, he could drop about 40000 Easy. So that's what I'm thinking. If you wanted to get creative and you've got a little bit of faith in Laddams, you might hold Laddams for two weeks and say he scores 82 and 79. It's not that pretty, but he's gone up to basically 500000 and you go, well, you know, his, his hot streak has ended. You know, it's time to offload him. Gorn has come back. He's over that injury. He scored 112. He dropped like 
30 to 50k. All of a sudden, Laddams is around 500. Gorn's like 680. And when we made the initial transaction, you pocketed 300k. But to go back to the initial way it was, getting Gorn back into your side, you've only got to outlay 180,000. And that number could be 160k, depending how they all score. It could be 200k, depending how they all score. But I would say most likely it's going to be around 170. Laddams will be around 500, and Gorn, if he plays, will drop in price, and it could be anywhere from 30, 30k to, to 50k. Just guessing. All depends on their score. But that's my interesting option for you, and it's something to ponder. What am I doing? I'm really confident Draper's going to come back. And in that instance, I'm just going to let Draper play. I think they'll need plenty of ruck options against the Saints because they're a pretty dynamic ruck duo themselves. So I, I expect him to come back. If he doesn't, oh, I probably haven't thought that far ahead. But if he doesn't, I, I don't want a copper zero. I know that much. And I, I dare say I'm half a chance to do the complex one. I'm half a chance to do the Laddams one. It'll give me coin to spend elsewhere. Um, so we'll see how that pans out. But I really want to get Fife in. At the moment, if I don't have to worry about my Ruckman, Pickett's going out for Fife, and I need to get a little bit more coin elsewhere. It's probably going to be Harley Bunnell down to Jack Bytel. You know, Bytel looked really good, scored 76. Jay Gresham is out too now for the year. So expect him to get a great opportunity in the middle. Um, for a young player, highly touted. I think he's a really, really good option. Um, but yeah, certainly assess your side and, and just see what you can do. But Fife and Cripps, they're really cheap for what they can do. Um, you know, Simpkin has really bottomed out. I know he wasn't that good the other day. We've probably got to start thinking about Bailey Smith and even Sam Doherty might be giving us a few headaches. But I didn't touch on them as much because I feel like we've got bigger fish to fry elsewhere. And I'm sure everyone is thinking about what to do with Gorn. So that would be my advice. Um, in terms of a VC loophole, I don't know, North Melbourne, they don't mind a little bit of a tag. How long can Neil stay up for? How many 150s can this bloke pump out in a row? He's got to dip at some point. He's a safe option. He might dip, but he's still going to ton up almost definitely. He's, he's too good of a player to not. But I'm going Dangerfield. I think Dangerfield is ready to go bang. He spent a bit more time forward the last couple of weeks, and it's provided him a bit of a rest. He still looked in good nick, but I expect his midfield to t midfield time to go right up against Port Adelaide in what is a massive game for the Cats against Port Adelaide. So I expect him to play a lot of midfield time, and uh, I mean he's a superstar of the game, and just by the law of averages, he pumps out one forty plus scores relatively often and we haven't seen one for a little bit partly due to position so i expect if he lines up in the center bounce i'll be licking my lips i'll be really pleased and i'll have the vc right on him and whether it's neil or whether it's grundy for the c that's an interesting one was grundy has not been looking that good i mean he's he's doing the job and, and Bruce is he's no slouch he's he's not great but he is capable, so don't know, don't know. I, I'm I'm almost leaning more towards Grundy, but I don't know. I've got to see if Draper's named, and I've got to see what Dangerfield does in my VC loophole. But we'll cross those bridges when we get to them. I hope you have a good week in Supercoach, and also just a good weekend. Not that us Victorians can do much, but you know, Shorty sends his love. It's a tough time. It's 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 a shit house time. There's no doubt about that. So hopefully we're through it soon enough and we can be out and about doing the stuff that we actually like and, and roaring at the footy soon enough again. But uh, all the best. I'll have another video up tomorrow with a few regarding some bets. Hopefully that can keep us entertained over the weekend. So I'll chat to you soon. Cheers.